Yes, Randy. Okay, so for the final time, we go over to Richard Hoyles. So, started with his flag up, asking him to come in steadily. Let's them go. The final race of the season at Salisbury. The runners are sent on their way, passing the winning line first one way, and they'll come back past the other in a few minutes' time. Early on, it is Treasure the Ridge in the white and purple colours who leaves from Paris Protocol white jacket towards what is currently the inside. Waterville Dancer in the green and red colours. Champagne Champ in the noseband winner of this race 12 months ago. Moabit in the mauve jacket is taking quite an enthusiastic hold. Megan Nichols having to restrain Moabit. Cadorpolin in the maroon and white and the blue and white colours of Rydan in the dark cheek pieces which he wears for the first time. So continue to race away from us and now entering the final mile and a half. Out in front, Treasure the Ridge leading Paris Protocol. Champagne Champ with Waterville Dancer and Godorpolin. Both Godorpolin and Moabit are taking pretty ferocious holds here. Moabit anchored towards the back, suggests we're not going a very fast pace here. The runner's well grouped and now they make their way across the intersection at the 10 furlong point and make their way steadily in a moment right-handed and turn back towards us, Godorpolin just moving out of the way of Moabit, who was possibly galloping on his heels a little. Both of those are a little wide as we approach the turn, which will begin shortly. Treasure the Ridge leads Paris Protocol in the white colours. Moabit has carted his way right up on the outside now to just about dispute the lead. Fourth for Champagne Champ, Godorpolin on the outside of Waterville Dancer. And Rydan's always been towards the back. So as they turn, Moabit now has the advantage, scuttling round the bend. And uh, it's been very free to this point. They haven't gone that fast, and Moabit has established a bit of track position here, handling the bend okay. Round it well. Four lengths is the gap now to Treasure the Ridge, so the complexion of this race is fundamentally changed. In third place is Paris Protocol. Well, he's about six lengths clear now, Moabit. Champagne Champ with Waterville Dancer, Godorpolin, and Rydan still at the back. So racing down towards the last five furlongs. Moabit out this clear lead, having pulled his way to the front, but being a major player, the others will have to decide when to give some chase. A few looking a little bit anxious. In second place, pushed along is Treasure the Ridge, Paris Protocol's white jacket. Waterville Dancers making steady progress. Godorpolin comes next, still powder dry for Rydan. Half a mile to go. Moabit still has the lead. Treasure the Ridge, the gap between the front two, about four to five lengths. Paris Protocol next, then Champagne Champ. Waterville Dancer still held on to is Rydan. Moabit with Megan Nichols still sitting quietly, trying to preserve every ounce of energy in case the challengers are able to get to her. Out in front, Moabit lead. Champagne Champ in the noseband. Paris Protocol, Rydan now asked for the effort. Aging left-handed, Moabit hanging towards the centre. Still has a clear advantage, however, but he's just getting the wobbles. Rydan over on the far side with Champagne Champ, but still out in front is Moabit inside the final furlong. Still has a lead of a good three lengths or so from in second place, Rydan. In third is Champagne Champ, and Moabit, despite being slightly errant in the last furlong or so, has uh, come home unchallenged to win for Megan and Paul Nichols. Champagne Champ, winner last year's second. This Rydan came home in third for the final race of the season here at Salisbury. Moabit has won once again for Paul Nichols and Megan Nichols, the nine to five favourite. Uh, with Champagne Champ just denying Rydan, second and third. We're heading to Musselburgh for the next. And this is uh, the feature race of the day at Musselburgh. It's a good contest as well. It's the EBF uh, Musselburgh Phillies Sprint Stakes, a listed race over five furlongs, and Clem Fandango is the 94 favourite. Glen Rowan Rose, 11 and 2, same price, the wagon wheel. Uh, Mabs Cross is 6 to 1, same price, Thesme, Intense Romance 8, and double figures the rest, Cosmopolitan Girl, a little bit of uh, each way support. Uh, Chris, Clem Fandango, good two year old, racing in France with credit so far this season. Yeah, um, the latest outing when finishing in sixth spot was on the back of a, a short break. I think they've kept her to France probably as much as anything just to target the ground conditions um, that seem optimum for her, not that you wouldn't get them on occasions, um, but bearing in mind that she's a French bred and that the premiums for French bred horses yeah. winning over there and her liking for easy ground, it made sense probably to campaign her over in France this year. But I think she's got the right kind of setup um, for this test because they're going to go pretty quick, you would think. and. She's a strong traveller that 
sitting just behind what should be a strong gallop. Likes of Thesme isn't going to hang around. You've got other free-going front runners in the field. Should be a strong pace. She might just be able to sit behind it, travel well, and perhaps pick them off. A very strong gallop on a sharp track. It could catch out Wagon Wheel, who yeah. is probably better over a little bit further, but will be seeing the race out. Yeah, the faster they go, the better for Wagon Wheel. Uh, Paul Hagen stall one. We'll have to drop her in and hope for a bit of luck in running, you'd imagine, Wagon Wheel. Yeah, um, I think the, the key for her is how will she be able to lie up in the early part of the race because mm. she was outpaced at Beverly last time out in the Beverly Bullet behind Tate Cover. Now, obviously, the, that kind of race, they are trapping along, yeah. but they will do in this, and this is a much sharper track than Beverly. Yeah. Her last two wins have been over six furlongs, so it might.